Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. It's a fantastic Tuesday morning. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. We'll try and dissect a lot of things this morning. I already have my guest on standby. I will talk to him later on the show, okay? But former Nigerian midfielder Muti Wadipoji was advised the Super Eagles coach Kenot Roa to carefully select his choice of strikers. I will lead the team's attack against Benin and Lesotho in the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Adekpoji stated this on the backdrop of all calls by some ex-international urging the technical crew to allow Kilechi and Acho to spearhead their Super Eagles attack due to his hard trick performance for Leicester against Sheffield United in Sunday's Premier League game. With Osime in and out for a while due to injuries and COVID-19, many believe Ian Acho's form is enough reason for him to lead the Eagles attack. Reacting to the development, the headmaster, as was fondly called, regarded during his playing days that the Raw should be left alone to decide the striker that will spirit his attack. Now, joining us live this morning is Emmanuel Josiah. He's a sports journalist. Good, Emmanuel, good morning. Good morning, Emmanuel. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you on the show, Emmanuel. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Now, Emmanuel, before I go to the assessments of the Super Eagles, Muti Wadekwadu says he believes that Kelechi should spearhead the attack for the qualifiers. And I'm saying, what if Kelechi's goals were a fluke? Uh, well, I think uh, everybody has uh, his uh, own opinion. And uh, Muti Wadekwadu is a, is a football great right here in the country. He has done very well uh, outside the country and right here in the continent. So I think uh, he has his own right to say whatever he wants to say. But we all know Kenneth Roa is a coach. And he has the right to pick who will definitely spare the attack. And I think uh, we all know the fair's uh, Victor Osime. So all, everything supposed down to Genotroa if he really wants to kill it in a show. No doubt. He's been firing on all cylinders. Six, uh, uh, six goals in three matches. You can't take it away from this wonderful Nigerian. But the truth is, it all boils down to Genotroa. But would you say that, um, look, let's try and assess the team now. This team going up against. Um, Lesotho and Ben Republic. Let's try from Emmanuel's perspective, try and assess the team for us now. Uh, assess the Nigerian side? Yes, of course, Nigerian side, of course. We're Nigerians now. All right, <laughs> all right, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Okay, I think uh, we have quality. As much as we want to deny everything, we have qualities. We have strikers scoring goals that we reckless abandon in the respective club, the Europe. So I think it's not going to be a problem. The defense line of the Super Eagles, all from the right fullback, the left fullback, the central defense, every one of them is playing week in, week out in the respective club. In the midfield, we can't talk anybody but El Dana, Wilfred Ndidi, Organic Caritable. Every one of them in the midfield is playing regularly. Let's not forget, Joe Arrivo has just won the Scottish uh, Premier League. It's a plus to Nigeria. The attack, Victor Osime is scoring. Henry Onyekuru is scoring. Uh, Kelechi Yenacho is scoring. Everybody is playing in the national team of Nigeria. So it's not going to be a problem. When you take a look about assessment, it's not going to be a problem. We are good to go, and there's no doubt we will beat the Republic at their own backyard. Now, Emmanuel, we have seen this happen in the past, and it still happens till now. These guys do so well from their clubs, scoring in like it's going out of fashion. They score like every day, and then they come spy goals, and they become like their mother's carrying babies. <laughs> really? It happens. I, I once spoke to a uh, former international, uh, Garba Chindolawa. He has played football to the highest level. He said, sometimes the Super Eagles is not for every It's players score in their respective clubs. When they get to the Super Eagles, they, 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 they fiddle away, not score. What he said was, the Super Eagles jersey is more heavier than the club jersey. And I want to agree with that. Not everybody will come and perform. But when they get to their respective clubs, they're on fire. Let me quote, let me quote John Obi Mikel this morning. He once said, as far as he's concerned, Nigeria is not worth, worth dying for. That he'd rather spill blood on the field of play for Chelsea than for the Super Eagles. Is that the attitude our boys have? Yeah, well, you can say, you can say that again. And I, and I think John Mikel is spot on. We all know what happened to some players coming to Nigeria, shedding blood for the Super Eagles. They get injured, nothing is the welfare of the players are not taking care of. They always refer them back to the club where they are playing. So it's a problem. It'll be when you tell them to come play on synthetic pitch, they will tell you the medics out there in Chelsea said he should not play on synthetic pitch. Sometimes he will still come and play. He gets injured, 
no welfare, nothing, no call through the players. So I think he's right. He has seen it all when you talk about playing football. So if I would die for this country and this country is not ready to sacrifice for me, my brother, there's no need to do that. Let me sacrifice my blood for Chelsea because I know they give me everything I want. Sometime last week, I had Dosu Joseph on the show. And um, I, I refused to ask him that question. But Dosu was on a private trip. He got injured. The NFF promised to help him initially. After a while, they said, well, it was a private trip. trip. It was not a, a, a national duty call and that they cannot help anymore. Yeah. Dosu limps yeah. till today. Maybe that's the attitude the Spy Goose players bring to, like, if I get injured, they're not going to help me. They'll give me an excuse. That is the truth. When they get injured, I can I can I can call and call and call. Victor and HB had that same complaint. John Michelobi had that same complaint. We can call and call. These players, they love to play for the national team. But after doing that and they get injured, they left they leave them unattended to and it's sad that a country like Nigeria, we can't take care of our players when they come playing for the country. And they always refer them back to their club. It's sad. But I think what John Nicolopia said is spot on. You sound very optimistic about Coach Gennot Raw and the players that we have. I like that. I like optimistic Nigerians. However, I know the Benin Republic team dropped their captain, Sessegnon, because he was clubless. But Nigeria calls their own captain, Ahmed Musa, despite the fact that he's clubless. Well, uh, uh, Scott, I'll tell you for free. Let's, not, let's leave this Ahmed Musa coming to the national team. General Kra said he's not going to be a, play, a player in that team. But when we take a look back, we have Steven Keshi. Steven Keshi was at the point in time, the captain of the team. He was on the bench. We have Kanu Wakwa. We have uh, Austin Dejo Kocha. At the point in time, Joseph Debo was on the bench at the Nations Cup. We have uh, these players with, with captains of the Super Eagles, and they were on the bench. So I don't think Ahmed Musa is a problem. Ra has come out to say it's not going to be a part of the team. It's just the 24th player. There is something that when Musa brings to the team off the pitch, and I think that is what Genetra wants. The sanity when Musa is in that team, he talks to this player, they give him that utmost respect. And I think uh, if he's not doing something on the pitch of play, he's definitely adding something off the pitch. So it shouldn't be a problem. Nigerians are clamoring that he should not be in the team. Yes, he should not be in the team because Genetra told us if you're not playing, if you don't have a club, you're not going to be in the national team. For God's sake, this is the captain of the team, and I'm not faulting Gennaro Trapp for anything. Other, other uh, ex-captains of the Super Eagles have been called up to the team and always on the bench. Now, the problem most Nigerians have, and I'm asking you that today, is the goalkeeping section of the team. You drop um, a Daniel Akwe, who plays in South African League. There is um, Ajiboye, there is Alan Pasu, you drop them. And I'm bringing in young boys like Maduka, who played in third divisions and all that. Does it, has he got any right in the goalkeeping section? Well, I think uh, the goalkeeping, uh, the, the goalkeeper trainer, Alosh Osaku, I spoke to him a couple of days, and he said Maduka Okoye is the best. Genetra has come out to say is the first choice. Do you, do you agree with that? Dela Lampasu, uh, Ajiboye, Ajiboye has gotten his time in the Super Eagles, and right now, according to Genetra, he believes the foreign-based players are far better than the home-based players. No respect to Daniel Akwe. He's been fantastic. He has more caps than his first choice uh, uh, in, in South Africa, and he's doing very well in South Africa. But like I said before, playing in the national team is different from playing in your club side. Daniel Akwe is always shaky for the national team, awesome for his club out there in South Africa. So some players are not just meant for the national team. They are meant for the club side. Before I put you on the burner this morning, um, are you saying that um, a Victor Maduka, a Maduka has more experience than Akwe? Maduka doesn't have a lot of experience than uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Akwe. But let's be realistic. He's young. Experience will count. But how come, that's a big question, how come when Daniel Akwe is in goal, Nigerians, they don't trust him, he's always shaky. It is not Nigerians doing. It is Daniel Akbar is doing. He's always finding it uh, difficult to hold his own in goal for the Super Eagles. Okay. Stay with me, man. I don't go anywhere yet. Now, Man City manager Pep Guardiola has dismissed the talk of winning a quadruple this season as unrealistic ahead of Tuesday's Champions League last 16 second leg against the Borussia Mönchengladbach in Budapest. 
Now, no English club has ever won both domestic cup competitions, the league and European Cup in the same season. But City remain in the mix for all of them. Guardiola's side lead the Premier League table by 14 points and travel to Everton on Saturday in the FA Cup quarterfinals. They are also due to face Tottenham Hotspur in the League Cup final next month. City are a step closer to the Champions League quarterfinals after their 2-0 win over Gladbach in the first leg last month, which was also hosted at the Puskas Arena in Budapest due to COVID-19 travel restrictions in Europe. We'll take a track up. The four titles is a, a UTP, so never happened before and I think it's not going to happen. The reality is this one. So we're just thinking the next one and after next one in Goodison Park and after international break, hopefully the players and their nationalities, they can come back safe and w well because we play for important things. When they come back, this is the only important thing. If you ask me if I agree with Sinchenko, I would say no, completely not. No, 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 it's not a pressure. So they, they, have, they have to f handle the pressure. They have to, 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 to play in this team, in this club, in this organization. They have to know that it's not nice when we lose a game. We have to win and win. That's for sure. But uh, it's, it's be out of the reality and focus. In a, I don't know what's going to happen the, 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 here at the end of the season. But normally, normally, this is not going to happen. It never happened before. So that's why <coughs> what we have to do like we have done since the day one is the game we're going to play tomorrow and against Munchak Black Club, Munchak, Borussia Munchak Club. It's the only thing I am, I am concerned. Right now it's worse than the previous ones because the previous ones won a lot and this team this year didn't win anything. So here is a, we are evaluated for the results, for the success, for the titles we can lift, especially for <coughs> outside. Um, uh, that, that's why the previous Man City won, and this team still we had. Pep Guardiola. Now, despite being up against an opponent at the top of their game, Borussia Mönchengladbach Nico Elvedi insists the team are looking forward to the second leg of their Champions League clash with Man City and will enjoy it after losing the first leg 2 0 last month. Trainer Marco Rose said Gladbach must improve, especially in attack to turn around their fortunes in the tie. Guardiola's side lead the Premier League table by 14 points and are still on for an unprecedented quadruple for League, FA Cup, League Cup and Champions League and go to this tie full of confidence after their win in the first leg, which also hosted at the Puskas Arena in Budapest due to COVID-19 travel restrictions in Europe. This was a run which saw Gladbach suffer a fourth straight Bundesliga loss against Augsburg at the weekend and six straight losses in all competitions since coach Marco Rose announced late last month his departure at the end of the season to join Borussia Dortmund. Rose said the team was not in serious trouble. Emmanuel, yeah. is Pep Guardiola being modest when he says we can't win four trophies this season? Can they do it? Well, I, I, think, I think every coach has a plan. And if any Pep comes out to say they can't, he's not looking at they can't. He's definitely sure they can do it. So every, every coach comes with a game plan. Uh, but I think it's feasible. Manchester City, uh, with the way the league is, nothing is going to stop them from winning the EPL. But who says they can't win the Champions League? It is a there for a long time. And I think uh, they stand a chance to get it. This is the match some people will be waiting for this night. Now, Atalanta will not alter their attacking philosophy while attempting to overturn a one-goal deficit in the second leg of their Champions League last 16 tie. At Real Madrid, coach Gian Piero Gasparini said yesterday that the Italians conceded a late goal to lose the first leg 1-0 in Bergamo, but they played most of that match with, a t with 10 men after Remo Frula was sent off in the 17th minute. Gasparini's team were unable to fully demonstrate the attacking style they are renowned for during the first leg, but the coach intends to throw numbers forward during the must-win match in Spain, despite the risks involved. Atalanta reached the quarterfinals in their debut Champions League campaign last season, where they lost to eventual runners-up PSG. Gasparini side then defeated Liverpool at Anfield as they finished second in their group to reach the knockout stages this year. Behind the English champions, but ahead of Ajax and FC Michelin. Now, um... Against Real Madrid, Atalanta. Gasparini says, I'm throwing all my men forward. It's a risk, but we'll take it. Well, I think uh, we should, uh, Real Madrid should be very, very careful with the way they take on Atalanta. They're a high-scoring side, and uh, uh, losing the, the first leg, one goal to nil, I don't think it's over yet. 
they have what it to score two, three goals uh, in a match. So I think this Zidane and Real Madrid team should be very, very careful. It's not all who planted last season in the UEFA Champions League. They got to the uh, and uh, it's difficult to be beaten. It's not possible that uh, you think they can they can win this. They can win this game, but will Real Madrid sit behind and watch? That's a million dollar question, but they should not write off uh, Atalanta side. Now, um, I'll come to you on that one. But if um, it was a Nigerian and it was a Yoruba man now, they would have said, is, is she a Yeni? <laughs> yes, but Madrid coach is saying, Zidane is saying he has, is at a loss to explain forward Eddie Hazard's latest injury setback as the Belgian will miss two days. Champions the game against Atalanta. Now, this guy was, he's been away for like almost a year now or, or more. And then he's back. Mm -hmm. He plays 15 minutes, he's injured again. This is not normal, is it? Well, I think uh, everybody will want to agree that he, his move from Chelsea to Real Madrid maybe was a wrong move. He has never gotten this uh, bad in his playing career, but Eden Hazard has really suffered when it comes to injury. Uh, getting injured all over again is a sad one for Real Madrid. They brought him to, to bring his experience to the team. Unfortunately, he has not given 10% of what uh, they, they got him for to do. So it's a sad one, but still, Remember, it has all the arsenals in them to get across Atalanta, but still, you don't want to ride the Atalanta team off. They are a very, very capable side of scoring lots of goals. How do you buy a player for 150 million euros in a, tw in a deal in 2019 and he gets injured half the time? He's a glass player. He's just glass. Well, well I think uh, we've seen the pack on the football. Uh, Nicolas Pepe, when you take a look at what they got him, uh, a lot of people will say maybe the price tag was just too much, it was super high. Pepe has not given back what Arsenal has uh, spent on him. Even uh, Victor Sime to Napoli, one would have thought he would have scored 10, 15 goals, but injury set in, coronavirus set in, he has not really delivered the goods. So that is his business, and uh, when it's business, you, you, you lose and you gain. So I think. Uh, it is a loss concerning Didi Hazard. Can we say maybe, just maybe, Real will be in trouble tonight? They've got key players on the bench. Casemiro is injured. Now, Eden Hazard is injured. Luckily, Sergio Ramos is back. Is that enough to take Atlanta out? They play attacking I, I, football. I don't, think, I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough. Yes, Sergio Ramos, uh, their inspirational captain, is back. And uh, Casemiro is out. Didi Hazard is out. It's going to be a very, very difficult one for them to get through Atalanta's side that scores goals. Let's not forget, they won one goal to nil. Atalanta can score three, five, six goals in a match. Will they be able to hold the arsenal of Atalanta? That's a big question. But the truth is, it is feasible. Real Madrid get this one. But if not, right away, Atalanta, it will be a big problem for them. Liverpool um, won yesterday, but Wolverhampton Wonders are a very tough team. And they give them a run for their money. Okay, they said mm. in the hunt, but uh, Wolverhampton Wonders, um, but the match was marred by an injury fright to the home team's goalkeeper, Rui Patricio. Now, play was held up for 10 minutes after Patricio collided with teammate Conor Quarry in the 89th minute. Now, he actually blanked out. Um, he actually had, mm. had to be given on oxygen before he got up, but we heard from the coach, Nuno Santo, Santo that it's all right, that not everything is all right, and he has to rest a bit. Might not be the next match, but he says, well, Nuno Espirito Santo says he's all right, he's fine. And um, good, some good news. But uh, what would this do for Liverpool, um, for Wolverhampton Wanderers? He's a fantastic goalkeeper in, in goal. And um, will this be a loss for the next few matches for them? I think it's a big blow for them. It, 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 it's sad for, for that goalkeeper. But the truth is, uh, I think when you get a team, there's always a replacement for everybody. Yes, might not be up to standard to the first choice. But I think in every team, there's a perfect replacement. So it gives another, another player a chance to showcase what he has to offer. So it's a big blow for the team, but they move on. It is football. They're part of injuries. People are saying it's over for him. His name is Lionel Messi. Barca coach Ronald Koeman says Lionel Messi is the most important player in the club's history as the Argentine celebrated making a record equal in 776 appearance for the Catalans on Monday, scoring twice. Messi produced another vintage display as he equaled Javi Hernandez's appearance record in Barca's for one victory at La Liga basement club, Huesca. Now, everybody what? says Messi is finishing, you know, but is this guy still the GOAT? 
Well, I think uh, you can't you can say much about Lionel Messi. You can say all you want to say about Lionel Messi, but he's a great player. He has made that uh, that fit, and I think uh, he's one player that to be in Barcelona. But I'm asking, Lionel Messi stay in Barcelona. I don't think it will add any difference. He has done so much for Barcelona. I think it's high time he leaves and search for some football somewhere else. He has done enough for Man for Barcelona, and I think he deserves to get somewhere another club uh, to just stay in his football. Messi has done very well for Barcelona. He should move. On. Like people would say on the streets in the bars, they would say, okay, good. Ronaldo has played in Man U, he was a legend. Porto, he was a legend. Um, um, Real Madrid, he was a legend. Juventus, he's a legend right now. Messi is a one team legend. So he's not the GOAT yet. For some people, people are concerned though that Messi should go and be a legend in another club to be the GOAT. <laughs> well, I think uh, you can say that again. Uh, when you talk about a lot of comparison concerning Ronaldo and uh, Lionel Messi, most people would tick in the side of Ronaldo because he has gone to so many clubs and has made difference. But Lionel Messi has been in Barcelona all his life. He should live there, go be a legend, some other club. And at that point in time, you want to argue or you want to put both players in the same power. But for me, I always stick with Cristiano Ronaldo. He has done it with so many clubs. Not Lionel Messi, but it doesn't take it away from him that he's a phenomenal player. He's a great player, a legend in Barcelona, a legend in world football. You can't write anything off concerning this, this, before this we go, second time. Before we go on the show now, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua have signed a two-fight deal to unify the IBF, WBO, WBA, and WBC heavyweight title. Now, reports yesterday citing boxing promoter Eddie Hearn. Now, Joshua beat Bulgarian Kubrat Pulev in December to retain his IBF, WBO, and WBA titles and set off the prospect of a mouth-watering clash with fellow Britain, Fury, the WBC belt holder. Matching did not immediately respond to a request for comments, but Fury 32 has not fought for over a year. This is a knockout win against American Deontay Wilder. Now, Emmanuel, love it or live it, Fury is a brute. He can fight, and he has a point to prove. Was banned for a while due to drugs, his back, and his back as a brute. And some are saying AJ doesn't have a chance. Well, I think uh, these two boxers are British boxers, and uh, both of them stand a chance. Uh, we all know the last time an undisputed champion came up in 1999, and that was uh, Lennox Lewis. Uh, it's going to be a very, very great fight for these two British boxers. 100 million pounds on ground for these two boxers. It tells you something. It's going to be a tough battle. Somebody will take the canvas. If it's going to be Tyson Fury, if it's going to be Anthony Joshua, I don't know. But I think Tyson Fury has an edge. He's bigger. He has longer hands. He has a great point. That very day, somebody will kiss the canvas. But if you're asking me who's going to kiss the canvas, I'll tell you, I don't know for sure. Well, you are trying to stay on the fence. I have my friends, uh, my colleagues who have consistently written Twitter messages to me and saying, listen, how can you not take sides with Anthony Joshua? You are Nigerian. I am a Nigerian. But the truth must be said. Fury is a brute. He will take Joshua out in maybe the first round, my opinion. He will kill Joshua, if you ask me. <laughs> my opinion, though, my opinion. He's a brute. Like, like I said, like I said, everybody has, everybody has a chance. Tyson Fury and uh, Anthony Joshua, great boxers. You can't take it away from them. But I think uh, I would stick to the end of uh, Tyson Fury. Thank you very much. I think that guy, that guy has a killer punch, and uh, yeah. it might give Joshua a whole lot of big problems on the ring. I thought so too. Emmanuel. Thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank, it. Thank you very much, Wallace Scott. Yeah, Good to be you. here. Yeah. Now we had Emmanuel Josiah on the show today, sports analyst. And he, of course, as you heard him, he's very brilliant, if you ask me. Now, tomorrow we'll continue this discussion of trying to assess the Super Eagles before the qualifiers against Lesotho and Benin Republic. Tomorrow on the show, we'll have former media spokesperson of the Super Eagles, Tony Ibisoye, on the show tomorrow via Zoom. Okay? So please stay tuned for that one. My name is Wallace Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. <laughs>